Hello everybody and welcome back to another video on my channel. I hope you're doing well and you have been remembering to take care of yourself. Today we are building a custom apartment building in Mount Komorebi as well as one of the apartments that I ended up furnishing. I actually didn't end up even doing a floor plan for the rest of the apartments because I didn't know exactly how I would lay it out and also I didn't want to furnish all of them because I wanted this to actually be something you could reasonably play in. I imagine for this apartment you would probably cheat for money to actually purchase it and then just pay the bills as if you are paying rent. It's a little bit expensive but I think it would be a fun challenge and I think it actually would be really fun to do gameplay with. So this apartment building is a little bit more rundown and cluttered and I imagine it's actually probably not the nicest apartments ever, but I really do like the way it turned out. And the apartment that I built and furnished itself is actually very, very small and I really, really like it. It's very cute and cozy and cluttered and I just adore the way it ended up being. So I imagine the sim that lives here is probably a young girl who has just moved into her first apartment and I decorated her place with lots of makeup and clothes and clutter and it's got like a very nice kind of pink color scheme but it's not anything too overwhelming. The apartment building also has a laundry room and a gym downstairs as well as a office space that I imagined would be like the head office for these apartments. And then other than the apartment I furnished in that downstairs area on the right, the rest of this building is actually completely empty. I was really trying to base the exterior style on the building to the left of this that is just one of the fake buildings in Mount Komorebi, but I really liked the style and I thought it would work well for an apartment. So you see me kind of panning over to the building next door to try and base this apartment off of that. And now as you can kind of see, the apartments upstairs are very small and the apartment with the light in it currently is the one I end up using for actually furnishing and like I said the rest of them are empty but of course if you wanted to you could furnish one of the other apartments and play in that one instead. It's completely up to you what you want to do with this build. And in case I didn't mention it already, this build is up on my gallery. My gallery ID should pop up on the screen right now. And I will let you guys know there is a little bit of CC in this build. I couldn't resist. There's this pack that is basically Snowy Escape Plus that I really love and really wanted to use some of the stuff in. And you don't absolutely need it for this apartment. You could definitely replace some of those things with other things in the apartment, but I really liked it. And so I will have that CC pack linked in the description if you do want to download it and play in this apartment. The CC is only for like some shelves and a bench by the entryway. So it's pretty minimal and stuff that could easily be replaced. I usually try to build without CC because I want my builds to be a bit more accessible to people who want to just download it and play in it and maybe don't necessarily want to go through the process of downloading a bunch of CC or also console players who don't even have that option. But for this one, I felt like it was okay and I just really couldn't resist the temptation to use it. So I did end up doing that. That also means that if you do download this apartment, when you go into my gallery, make sure you check include CC and you will have it pop up at that point. But if you don't check include CC, it won't come up. So hopefully you're able to find this and play in it if you would like. And if you're just here to watch me build an apartment, that is perfectly fine as well. I really love watching speed build videos and that kind of thing and really enjoy it. So hopefully you just enjoy that experience if that's what you're here for. I really do appreciate the support from people who do actually watch my videos and it's something that I really love and 
I am just so excited that people actually want to watch my YouTube videos. And recently we also hit 300 subscribers, which is so exciting and super crazy to me. And I cannot thank you guys enough for that. So in the build, we are moving on to the little bathroom I did downstairs. And this bathroom is pretty run down and small, but I wanted to have a bathroom downstairs because I imagine one, if people are coming to meet with the person at the leasing office or whoever works there who needs to use the bathroom, obviously it's reasonable in, you know, this pretend world where we can actually build our own apartments that they would be able to have access to a bathroom. But also because there is a gym space down here, I wanted to have a toilet and a shower right there in case your Sims just wanted to hop in the shower really quick while they're downstairs if they're, you know, on their way out the door or whatever. So I decided to include that down here. And then here, this little long room on the side is what I ended up making the laundry room, which I definitely think there are probably way too many washers and dryers in here for the amount of tenants that would actually be living in this apartment, but I think it's fine. I felt like it fit and it looked pretty good. So that's what I ended up doing. Also, in case you're curious, I do think that you could probably fit four or five apartments in this building if you wanted to say play with two families or use a mod or something to make this more realistic, I guess. I know there are some mods out there that you can use, but also I think you could play this with the roommate system just fine, or you could play with maybe two, three, four single sims that each have their own apartment and just make sure to lock the correct doors and make sure everything is set up to be the way you actually want to play it. I don't personally think these would be very good family apartments because the way I imagine it laid out in my head, I think they're all pretty small apartments. And because this building is a little bit more run down, I just imagine it as more student housing or, you know, very young people living here. But again, however you want to play this apartment, if you want to play it at all, it is completely up to you. So now we have moved on to the furnishing of the actual apartment I furnished, not just the building itself. And the layout is kind of weird, but I really ended up liking the way it worked and it felt like it flowed pretty well. So I ended up doing the kitchen in the little nook you see there and then the living room where I'm putting it now, but oriented the way I just put it towards the window. And I put the bed kind of shoved in the corner and the little bathroom in the corner there. I also really wanted to do a separate toilet room like is more common in more Japanese or Asian areas, but I couldn't fit it. This apartment was way too small. And so I ended up just putting the toilet, shower and sink all in the same room together. I also was able to fit in a little dining table in by the kitchen, kind of behind the couch, and I was able to put some clutter on there and a laptop. So even though there isn't a proper office or desk space in this apartment, I feel like that's fine. And then if you want your sim to eat, there's an empty space. And if you have someone over, then you can just drag the laptop into your sim's inventory and I think that that will work out just fine. I also included a clothing rack in this apartment to kind of separate the sleeping area from the rest of the apartment. And like I said, I imagine this sim is definitely more traditionally feminine and really likes clothes and makeup and hair and nails and that kind of thing. So there are definitely a lot of clothes everywhere and a lot of clutter that is kind of makeup related. I also spent so long placing clutter in this apartment. I was really having so much fun with it. And I am definitely someone that loves clutter, but I love doing these builds specifically where I am able to just pack it full of clutter. And I've been kind of missing that because recently I did like the tiny home, which didn't really have room for a ton of clutter. And I did a build before that, that I can't remember that didn't have room for clutter or didn't have the budget for clutter. 
Oh, I'm thinking of the base game home build I did, which I did on a budget. And also there isn't a lot of great clutter in the base game. And so that build was not as cluttered as I probably would have liked for it to be. I will say though, because there is so much clutter in this apartment, it made it way more expensive than it needed to be. Of course, I'm sure the washing machines downstairs didn't help with the price, but the clutter definitely didn't help and there is so much of it. I completely filled the shelves over the kitchen and I also used the snowy escape counters which have all of that open shelving that I completely filled with stuff. I also even included a shelf in the bathroom that the towel hangs off of and on top of the shelf there is even more clutter. I also want to mention that I did fill the empty areas of these apartments with platforms, but I don't actually know if that's super practical for gameplay because I found while building my camera jumping up to the platform level was a little bit annoying. So if you want to remove those, I completely understand and I think that's a reasonable thing to do. I think it would drive me crazy after a while too, but I did it initially because I felt like it kind of made it clear that those apartments weren't somewhere you were actually supposed to go. Also, as you probably just saw, I have been doing this thing where I put the mugs that we got from the Everyday Clutter Kit in the sink in the kitchens with the OMSP shelf so I can get it to the perfect height. And I've been really loving that and the sink is still functional. And I also discovered the other day that if you take the plates from, I believe the Paranormal Pack and raise them to the correct height, they can fit in the sink with the mugs and the sink will still function. And I really like that because I feel like I always end up with dishes sitting in my sink and I try my best to get them done, but I feel like they just end up collecting there somehow. And it's really kind of not the best habit to have, but like I said, I think the sim is really messy. And so I felt like it was an okay thing to do for this sim. And I just think it's kind of cute. Anyways, as you just saw, that is where the dining area ended up being and I put that laptop there and kind of nested the dining table over the side table for the living room and I really like how that turned out and I feel like it's a pretty practical use of the space. You also probably saw in the entryway that slatted bench that I put in there. That is one of the CC things I ended up using in this apartment because I really love it and I think it's really cute. Of course, you could delete it completely or put a side table there or put an ottoman there if you wanted to. Um, that is up to you if you don't want to download the CC, but I really liked it and I felt like it wasn't a super big deal to include it in this build. Also from the same CC pack is where I got those shelves that are in front of the windows and in front of the couch. Um, I ended up putting a TV on top of that and I feel like you could just totally replace that with a different table if you wanted to, but again, I thought it was really cute and something that was easy to replace. So that is pretty much it for the video today. I hope you have enjoyed. I hope you have a wonderful day today. You make sure to take care of yourself, drink some water, eat some food, know that you are loved, and I am proud of you. Bye.